Hi, buddy. How do you do? Jamie. Not so bad. Good to see you. Nice to be in. I was going to say sunny Newcastle. Well, it's dark. It's dark. It's still, it's a beautiful city, Newcastle. Yeah. I've always been a huge fan. So, I have quit the Labour Party myself. Uh, I joined the Labour Party when I was 15. Mm. Uh, that was not last year. I, I'm a geriatric millennial, I'm 39. Um, it's kind of weird, it's emotional, isn't it? Because you were in the Labour Party. Yeah, I joined uh, in 1985 when I was 15. Yeah, I was at the tail one. end of the miners' strike. Um, my mum had been in the Labour Party, I'd been a Labour councillor, I'd been a Labour mayor. And despite having a fantastic record, um, they'd been trying to get rid of me for ages and said, you're not allowed to be the mayor of this new area that you've negotiated this fantastic devolution deal for. So what happened? Let's talk about this. You were mayor elected what year? 2019. Yeah, uh, covering Newcastle, North Tyneside, all the way up to Scotland and Berwick. It's a big area. It's huge. And uh, when I was elected, I started negotiating with central government, trying to bring in other councils to get a bigger area. And I've got a devolution deal worth six billion quid for transport. Fair work. Yeah, it's fair work. It makes a difference. Um, the best funded deal in England. And I've created over 5,000 jobs, got 2,000 homes built on brownfield land. We run child poverty prevention program in 100 schools. Not put a penny on the council tax, no borrowing. The perfect example of economic competence, but with real good social responsibility in there. The jobs we create are backed by a good work pledge. Um, and they blocked me. Uh, they never gave the official reason why, but they've been trying for ages. They wouldn't let me have data. I got an email in the January saying, mm. we will only let you contact members directly if you promise you're not going to run as mayor. And then it wasn't until March that I was talking to Ken Loach, legendary filmmaker, about a film he'd made here in the Northeast about fighting racism. Um, and they subsequently uh, briefed against me saying that was the reason they blocked me, mm. but they'd actually tried to block me before then. Because th just so people are aware, when we talk about blocking, what happens is you're the, this area, and yeah. then this now becomes a bigger area. You were instrumental in that. You have this record, mm. very popular, um, and you're not even put on the list, the long list. Big, and then because what would happen then is members would choose. This is the point. That's right. It's like you know, Labour members are presented with a list. They get to choose who is on the list. So what when you say blocked, what you mean is they prevented Labour members from being able to say if hey, this guy has been mayor for a while. Should he be able to be on? Do you, want, do you want him? It's up to you. You decide. Uh, and isn't that funny when we talk about devolution and giving power back to communities, they wouldn't let people in the North East choose who was their mayoral right, candidate. Yeah. It was the NEC from London who made that decision. We are no way going to risk letting Labour members choose their own candidate because they're obviously going to choose Jamie Driscoll um, and he is anti-austerity. Yeah, and that was it. And that was it. Because they've nationally committed to a fiscal rule which bakes in Tory austerity. Yeah. It means they're not going to increase taxes on the rich, on those who are doing well. So that means it means just more of the same economic policies, but with a Labour rosette attached to it. Well, it does. I mean, if you look, we just had the budget last week now, um, and we've now got literally exactly the same tax and public spending policies from Labour and Conservative. And they're over here claiming that's what's going to happen. What's the only thing that can happen? And everybody else is over here saying, why can't I get my medical treatment? Why are my buses not running? Why is my kid's school crying out for teaching assistance? It's because they can't afford to hire anybody. Everybody's in a cost of living crisis. Um, and we've got all our utilities spewing feces into the rivers. Um, and everyone can see, well, we're worse off and there's a load of rich people getting richer off. And all we need is a wealth tax. And if you say wealth tax, then they sort of come out in a cold sweat, don't mm -hmm. they? Um, and, and even mainstream economists say, well, yeah, actually, that needs to be what happens now. And what everyone can see is the emperor has no clothes. Austerity never worked, and it's not going to fix anything. Keir Starmer made that argument at the leadership election. He said, you know, that... <laughs> no, I, I interviewed him. You did, video. you did. You did a video just like this. <laughs> I promise this won't be a theme. You do videos of people who then... Uh, stabbing in the back. No, I mean, <laughs> Keir Starmer, he did this, you did a video with him. Yeah. In that leadership election, he promised things like public ownership, mm. he hiking, asking the well off to pay a bit more so we can invest in all the things that are falling apart. That's the argument he made. Uh, not saddling young people with debt because they dream of a university education. Mm. I mean, he made a whole range of problems, uh, policies like that. And the point he made is Labour's terrible loss in 2019 wasn't because of those policies. People didn't think, 
you know what? I like my privatised utilities. Uh, and and I, I, I think we should leave the rich alone. They're paying too, they're paying too much tax. People didn't... Oh, but that was the argument he made. Yeah. So it's not like we're saying, you know, we're just actually... So what does that say about him? That's his leadership campaign. What does that say about anything he ever says? You've only got to look at his stance on Gaza, where he'll say, you know, oh, um, uh, I can't say that because the US State Department hasn't cleared it, which is what's behind it all, we know. And then a week later, he says, I never said that. And there's any number of clips. Anyone who searches on YouTube for Keir Starmer U-turns, they will see him saying the exact opposite thing less than 12 months later. And if someone's willing to be that dishonest mm. when there is no pressure on them to do with running a country, then he'll buckle at the first sign of any pressure. But, I mean, what is he promising? I mean, who is advising them? Who, who are the donors? Yeah, yeah. Who are the, all the spads coming in? They're not coming from trade unions. They're not coming from community groups. Not ordinary people, yeah, exactly, who've linked. I mean, you met the point about Gaza. For me, that... It's a, it's a question, actually, of kind of, like, is someone fit to be Prime Minister? Because he said early on that Israel had the right to cut off water and energy to civilians. Yeah. Had shallow cabinet ministers go on to defend him on that position, and then two weeks later said he never said that he had the right, mm -hmm. they had the right to do it. On the Green Investment Pledge, I think that's £28 billion. Pounds. That was something that was different from the Conservatives. It was. And um, they got rid of that, um, not because they were under any meaningful pressure. I mean, look at the head of the polls because the choice had destroyed themselves, yeah. but because they thought they might come under pressure. But that, isn't that worry? I mean, what, just, I'm trying to work out what will they be like in government? They'll just be buffeted by events. Your opinion of someone should not be based on what they say in an election. It should be based on what they've done when they had power. And that's what I say in this election. My track record speaks for itself. Yeah. And that's why people trust me. That's why I'm getting support from right across politics. And by the way, fixing problems is very, very popular with the electorate. Yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but what is actual record? His actual record is to break every promise he's said, to use all kinds of procedural and legal shenanigans to try and stop any hint of dissent. Mm. And dissent is what they're, they're terrified about. Yeah. Um, well, are you going to trust someone like that if you're in an industrial dispute? If you're a public sector worker and you're getting your pay cut, how do you think a Starmer government would deal with you? Because if they get a big majority, they can do what they want then. Exactly. Um, I, mean, I hear that, but people say, Jamie, come on, they'll be better in power. <laughs> yeah, because it's well known that all governments decide to deliver more than they promised when they get into power. Um, nobody believes that. That's um, a fiction that people who are trying to come up with uh, a reason to find hope in Keir Starmer, the people who've, who just don't want to say, no, actually, you know what, they need to be under yeah. pressure. And that was, that's what this has got to be about. Yeah. Now, for me, it's actually about delivering for the people in the North East, getting that publicly controlled transport system that's going to be free for 18s and under and all students, about making sure we're building affordable homes, about directly investing in businesses. I do that already, by the way. You know, this, this uh, venture capital, and when the business is successful, the money comes back to the public purse instead of disappearing off into tax mm. havens. This works, and it's possible. Again, people say, I hear all this, but I know the Tories are 20 points behind. I know Rishi Salak is some slightly less popular than, I don't know, cholera at the moment. <laughs> but they've experienced that bitter feeling time and time again of waking up or staying up, the exit poll, bum, 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 the toys are back. And they just think to themselves, I know, I hear what you're saying, but I can't risk it. I just can't risk it. What do you, th what do you think about that? What do you say about the toys could just win again? And then how, what if I, vote the, I didn't vote for Labour? It's just not going to happen. And the Tories... I know, because I work cross party, they all tell me, no, we haven't got a hope in hell. They've given up. That's why you've got some of them going off to their GB News 100 grand a year jobs. That's why you've got others going for their jobs in the city or their corporate directors. That's why you have ministers resigning so they don't have to serve the period after they've come out of government. But they've got no chance, they know that. They're fighting a rearguard action to keep hold of it. Um, but the real worry is, what happens if nobody makes a challenge? As, this, as politics is shifting to this authoritarian, oh. austerity politics, where's the voice that says there's an alternative? And if that voice doesn't speak up, authoritarian, austerity politics will dominate Britain for the next decades.
So do you think that's the danger that if the left, if people, if people let's not even think about left or right in that way. Mm. Let's just think of people who think basic common sense ideas, I suppose. Should, mm. the, should those doing, who are doing well pay a bit more tax? Like, lot, I mean, that's kind of a, any, loads of mainstream economists argue for that. Do you think utilities are better run, which service people's basic needs by shareholders or by people often locally? Um, if the people who don't have a kind of message that resonates when it, people get pissed off, basically, with the Starmer government, that vacuum's got to be filled by someone. And it will be filled. And that's the real risk, is it, you don't have to have a deep political theory of change or understand the difference between Keynesian economics and post-Keynesian economics to realise that your energy bill has gone up. Mm -hmm. And you read a story in the press saying these people have made billions of pounds of profits to say, who speaks for me? Why is no one looking after me? Why am I struggling to put food on the table for my kids? Well, who fills that vacuum? We know it's the populist right and they will do that. And, and they have what, lots of places. What people should be worried about is something akin to a, a Farage-led Conservative Party, oh. <laughs> the election after next. Pe people listen to that thing, horrified, I'm sure. But you can't rule that out. That's the point. Mm. I mean, just a couple of other things. I mean, some will go again. Lovely stuff. But you're only going to appeal to a narrow section of people. Just a bunch of raging <laughs> lefties reading their Karl Marx books. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. Um, what would you say to that as someone? You've been you, you have been elected, so that kind of helps. Well, but in terms of who, who, who are you appealing to? How does that kind of answer that? Well, I'm not, even, I'm not an opposition politician. I'm in power doing stuff. Yeah. That's really unusual. I suppose that answers the unelectable point about being elected. Yeah, <laughs> and I've shown it works. And there's papers in the regional press, uh, letters coming in saying, you know, I, I would never have voted Labour, but I'm voting for Jamie Driscoll. All of the stuff we're doing when we say we want your bus to turn up on time, we want your energy bills not to be subsidising foreign hedge funds. People like that. It speaks to them because it's actually in their own direct interests. So this works. It's popular. And it would make Labour more electable if they actually decided to stick with some fairly sensible policies. These are mainstream policies in Germany and in, in Scandinavia. And it, it used to go by the old fashioned name of social democracy. Mm. You know, mm. this, is, this is not a five year plan no. from the 1920s Russia. No. So I'm, I'm supporting this new initiative mm. called We Deserve Better. It's not my initiative, very important to say that. It's something I'm just supporting. It's a crowdfunder, it raises money for, lab, uh, for in, Labour candidates who are lefties still, they still exist. You know, if people support these sorts of policies, if they're not kicked out, we'll see what happens. <laughs> but crucially, green candidates um, or independent candidates, it's pragmatic, basically. It just says, what does that candidate stand for? You know, do they stand for the sorts of things we've just been talking about or don't they? That's that's the criteria. Um, and they might dis will disagree with them uh, on, 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 on lots of different issues, but on kind of core issues. What do you, you know, what do you think about that? I mean, it's been backed by people who used to be Labour councillors who yeah. resigned recently over Gaza. What would you say to people who are a bit cynical about that? Why do you think that might be a good idea in the current kind of climate? The mindset of that very small group of people in the Labour, there's a lot of very good people still in the Labour Party, there's a lot of very good elected officials in the Labour Party, politicians, but this small group are in control, they look at the polls and they've, they've got this very narrow group in Middle England who they think they should listen to and basically they've narrowed it down to the extent where they just ring up Jeremy Clarkson and ask him what he thinks <laughs> and they need to be shown, no, you need to stick to policies that are anti-austerity and are going to change people's lives. And there's been loads of councillors left the Labour Party in the North East. There will be independent standing. But ahead of the general election is going to be my election here in the North East. Now, you get someone like me, who's very popular across party, lots of Tories say they're going to vote yeah, for me, lots of reform yeah. people say they're going to vote for me, but huge numbers of people in the Labour Party are campaigning for me, yeah. secretly, below the radar. Then that is going to change national politics. Because just as when you had um, Douglas Carswell and Mark Reckless elected ahead of 2015 and Cameron says, all right, we'll go much more in the referendum direction. Because they have to look over their shoulder. Yeah. So that will say, yeah, all right, we probably do need to start talking about how we're going to fund our public services properly, which is economic common sense. So getting behind these candidates is the only way you're going to change it in a two-party system. I'm very funny because you, the election's in May. Mm -hmm. For you, in terms of the kind of three key things you really want to, like three headline policies to kind of flesh out 
this is a this is what we can have because again a lot of people it's like you're asking for the world you guys yeah. just settle come on Ch <laughs> chill out moderate you know your demand suck it up kind of thing what would you say in terms of three key things you're standing for which show actually come on this is just basic stuff, common sense stuff here. Guys. Publicly controlled transport system where the buses, the metro, the rail is all integrated into one with travel free for everyone 18 and under, under and everyone in full time education. And that gives it long term sustainability actually. It's financially more viable. Uh, full employment, and that means helping people get into work, helping people who are economically inactive, get the training, get the skills. I've already created over 5,000 jobs here. I want to more than double that. So. That is actually good economic common sense, more people in work, more tax receipts, and then the Green New Deal. And that's not just about investing in offshore wind, which we've done, and retrofitting homes, which we've done, but that's about changing our public spaces so your town centre isn't just somewhere where people are trying to fleece you and get you to empty your pockets. It's so there's places where young people can hang out and meet without it costing a fortune, where we have some public luxury and better public spaces and get away a little bit from some of the consumerism into a much more sustainable lifestyle. Now we can do that in the Northeast, but here's the real worry. If you were an establishment person who was right behind the, the hedge fund model of Britain, that would terrify you. Yeah. The idea that our public services are to be run in the interest of the public and not in the interest of wealth extraction. Boom. Jamie, massive, massive honor. I think it really fleshes out why this is important. Uh, everything crossed, obviously. And uh, when people donate, for example, to this crowdfunder, one of the incredible candidates they will be donating to support will be you. So I, obviously, I hope people consider that. Um, Jamie, big honour. Cheers.